<laughs> okay, so we started uh, talking about equilibrium uh, yesterday, and we found out um, that that is when we have a reversible reaction. So a reaction that can go from reactant to product, and the products can go back and make more of the reactant. So that's the reversible reaction. And of course, uh, to be reversible, that has to occur under the same experimental conditions. Okay, so the experimental or the reversible reaction uh, we're looking at is hydrogen plus iodine goes to 2HI. Then those 2HI molecules can bump into each other and make hydrogen and iodine again. Right? Well, eventually what happens for a reversible reaction is that the rate of the forward reaction will decrease and the rate of the forward reaction will increase and then a sort of feedback loop uh, uh, comes together where eventually they start making the reactants of each of those reactions and eventually they'll equal. So the rate of the forward reaction equals the rate of the reverse reaction. That's what we uh, now know as, uh, that's what we call dynamic equilibrium. So the dynamic part is there because the reaction's still going on. Okay? That's the important part. The reaction's still going on. The net change in concentration is zero because for every two moles of HI you're going to make in the forward, you're using up two moles of HI in the reverse. Okay. But it's still going on. And then we found out we can write uh, both equations uh, just one time by using our back and forth equilibrium arrows. And that's what we'll do quite a bit. Right. <coughs> so... Um, one thing we're going to want to do is we are going to want to express those concentrations, whatever they are, even though they're not changing, under equilibrium conditions, okay? And what we do is we all express that with an equilibrium constant, which is a uppercase K. And... This all goes back to the rates, because that's what equilibrium is equal to. The rate of the forward equals the rate of the reverse, all right? So here we have this equilibrium system. A plus B goes to C plus D. Just generic, okay, just getting this. These, the reactants can be anything. The products can be anything, all right? So uh, what we have is we have two rates, and so therefore we can write two rate laws, okay? So we can write the rate of the forward reaction, or just say rate sub F, equals rate constant times the concentration of A times the concentration of B. And of course we need rate orders. And what we assume for equilibrium is molecularity where the coefficients become their orders. And so we would write this as A raised to A, B raised to B. Okay, so that would be our rate law for the forward reaction. Forward forward. So that's the forward reaction, and then the reverse would be C plus D going to A plus B. So we also have a rate law for that equation, right, or for that reaction. Rate of the reverse equals a rate constant. It's a different rate constant, so I'll say K prime. equals the concentration of C times C, or raised to the C, times concentration of D raised to the D. <coughs> At equilibrium, they would be equal to each other, right? Because that's what equilibrium is. Rate of the reverse equals rate of the forward. rate of the forward equals the rate of the reverse. And so what we can do is we can plug in the rate law expressions into these rates. And so that's where we can start to see how we're, we can express the concentration of all these uh, molecules reactants and or products um, at equilibrium. So what this would equal is K, prime, K times A 
raised to the A, B raised to the B equals K prime C raised to the C, D raised to the D. All right, and so what we want to do is put this in uh, context and put a ratio of the products and the reactants concentrations. And by just, you know, what we usually do is we put it as the products over the reactants, okay? So let's divide both sides by K prime. So we K over K prime equals concentration of the products raised to their coefficients all over the reactants raised to their coefficients. Not a very good C. All right, and so what we do is we usually don't just write this, the ratio of the rate constants, K over K prime, we call that, that's our equilibrium constant, K. And so normally what we'll write this as, as is K, uppercase K, equals the concentrations of our products over the concentrations of our reactants. Technically, it could have been the other way, reactants over products, but for whatever reason, we always just uh, look at it in terms of products over reactants. All right, so that's our equilibrium concentration, or equilibrium constant which is a ratio of the product concentration over the reactant concentration raised to their coefficients. <coughs> All right. So that's the, you know, the generic A plus B goes to C plus D. So we'll get some practice on some real equations. But that's where this uh, expression is derived from, just from the rate laws. All right. Of the forward and the reverse. Well, it turns out that we will practice writing them and also think about what that number means, what that number tells us. It turns out that number can tell us a lot of information about an equilibrium system. Okay, So let's consider uh, this first one. Okay, Let's write the equilibrium constant for this first equilibrium reaction, hydrogen plus bromine, uh, gives us 2HBr. So it's K equals the concentration of the products, HBr raised to their coefficients all over the concentrations of hydrogen times bromine. All right, so it turns out that uh, the equilibrium constant for that equilibrium system is 1.9 times 10 to the 19th at 25 degrees Celsius. Uh, so it turns out that uh, these are temperature dependent because they're all about the rates, right? Rate of forward equals rate of the reverse. That's what equilibrium systems are, or what equilibrium is, rather. Um, so we know that rate is uh, dependent on temperature, right? So equilibrium constants are temperature dependent. So you'll often see them listed with a temperature. But anyways, so that's at 25 degrees Celsius. It happens to be 1.9 times 10 to the 19th. Is 1.9 times 10 to the 19th, is that a big number or a small number? Big. That is a big number. Okay. So that's you know, 10 to the 19th, that's almost 10 to the 20th, that's almost 
uh, 10 billion, 10, 20, 30, 10 billion times 10 billion. That's, uh, you know, 10 to the 20 is 10 billion times 10 billion. Okay? So it's a big number. I don't know where I was going with that. I was thinking about stars. Okay? So a good uh, number, if you're ever, you know, in a conversation with someone, you know, how many stars are there in the universe? That pops up all the time. Okay? The good ballpark number back of the envelope calculation is that there's 10 to the 10th galaxies in the observable universe, and there's 10 to the 10th stars in the galaxy. Okay? So 10 to the 10 times 10 to the 10 is 10 to the 20th. So that's pretty big. There's a lot of stars in the universe, if you didn't know. You should write that down. Okay? And so 10 to the 19th, that's almost as many stars as there are in the universe. That's where I was going with that. Okay? Aren't you glad we had that talk? Yes. Okay. All right, so that is a big number. So what does that mean? Well, it turns out if you look at the magnitude of that equilibrium constant, you can get an idea of what you have more of. Okay? So if that's 10 to the 19th, what does that mean? Do you have more products or more reactants at equilibrium? Which concentration is larger? More products. More products? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it turns out that if you have a big number here for K, you either have a really big number in uh, the numerator or a really small number in the denominator. Either way, you have more products than reactants. And so that's something you could always uh, determine by the magnitude of that K. So if K is much greater than 1, so a really big number, so I'll use two greater than symbols, so much bigger than 1, so a big number, 1,000. Thousand's a big number. Okay. That means your product concentration is greater than the reactant's concentration. All right, so let's do another one. Let's play this game up. So let's write out the equilibrium constant for the next equation. Okay, and why don't you do that? I'll give you a little bit of time. Write the equilibrium constant for this next expression. So K equals, what do you think you're going to write down? 2 You can write it down. No, no, write it down. Just go like this. Not like this. Okay, now what do we write down? What do we put on top? N O squared all over. N2 and O2. Okay. Everybody get that? Good. All right. So that's the equilibrium constant for this equilibrium system. <laughs> now it turns out that the equilibrium uh, constant exp or equilibrium constant for that equilibrium system happens to be 4.1 times 10 to the negative 31st at 25 degrees Celsius. So now is that a big number or a small number? Small number. That's a small number. Don't you wish there was questions like that on the quiz? Like, is this a big number or a small number? <laughs> big, I nailed it. Okay, maybe, yeah, we got an exam coming up on Monday. Who knows? But you will have to ask yourself this. Okay, so that turns out to be a small number, times 10 to negative 31st. Okay, you will be happy to know I do not have an amazing uh, analogy, like the stars example. I don't have an analogy for how small that is. That's, that's how small that is. I don't even have an analogy for it. That's really small. No, that's, that's like smaller than atoms. So atoms are 10 to the negative 12 meters. So 10 to the negative 31st, I mean, phew. That's all the sound I can make. It's, phew, it's small. Can you see it in a microscope? 
Nope. No. No. You can see you can, there are text, there's ways you can see Adams and I scope. Uh, in like script, they're they're roundabout ways to see it. So if you're interested, you know, they're scanning tunneling microscopy, STM imaging, or AFM atomic force microscopy, where they basically use really really small needles and measure current that uh, basically pops up from the atom to that needle, and you can uh, image atoms that way. There's a picture in your book, chapter two. Okay. Uh, researchers at IBM actually moved individual atoms and spelled out IBM using, I think it was AFM, atomic force microscopy. Mm -hmm. I think that's the image. And I think there's another image uh, of a um, either, yeah, Chinese, a Chinese um, semiconductor industry that did the same thing with their uh, um, name, except for it's in Chinese, so I don't know what it is. IBM, I read that, no problem. The Chinese one gave me a little bit of trouble. All right, anyway, so that's small. So what do we have more of? Which concentration is bigger, the products or the reactants? Yeah. The reactants, okay? So for this number to be small, one of two things happen. Either the concentration of the products is really, really small, or the concentration of the reactants is really, really big, so you're dividing by a really, really big number. Either way, that's going to give you... Uh, the fact that if, hmm, if k is really, really small, so much less than 1, a thousandth, okay, 0 0.001, uh, or smaller, that means the concentration of reactants is greater than the products. Yep. Products concentration is smaller. Reactants <coughs> concentration is bigger. You say tomato, I say I, I say tomato too. I don't know anybody who says tomato. You say tomato? Okay. I, now I know someone. Are they so tomato? Alright, I'm expanding my horizons. Alright, so that's gonna be really useful actually. The fact that we can tell uh, relative concentrations just by looking at the magnitude of that equilibrium concentration or equilibrium constant is really nice. And that will actually come back and help us out all right, when we're doing calculations. Actually make our calculations easier uh, by realizing that in the future. Okay?